In this tutorial, we're going to focus in on solving a simple linear equation in one variable with split fractions. This type of problem belongs to the group algebra. It's a skill, like I said, solving linear equations in one variable. And as we saw in the example, it involves several fractions. Prerequisites to performing this type of exercise, you have to know what the LCD is, or the least common denominator, or lowest common denominator. You have to know the multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction properties of equality. That means you can add any number you want to both sides, subtract any number you want to both sides of an equation, divide both sides of an equation by any number except for zero, and multiply both sides of an equation by any non-zero number. And you should also know how to distribute. When faced with a problem that involves several fractions, what you want to do, and by the way, when faced with an equation with several fra uh, fractions, what you want to do is find the lowest common denominator or least common denominator. So I'll look through all those denominators, uh, which is just 3 and 4, and I'll find the smallest number that they both divide into, which happens to be 12. And what you do with that 12 is you multiply both sides of that equation by 12. The reason why we initially do this is because it allows us to get rid of those fractions. One thing I often see students do is they, they find the common denominator and they change this fraction into an equivalent fraction. When you have an equation, you have the right to get rid of fractions. I've heard some students call this fraction busting because somebody has told them that from another course or something. What it comes down to is that no matter what, when you're given an equation, you do not have to work with fractions that often. All right, so we'll use distribution. I'll attach the 12 to that first term, and I'll attach the 12 to the second term there. And then on the right-hand side, I'll just multiply that 12 times that negative 2. So the right-hand side becomes a negative 24. That's the easy side. The left-hand side, I'm going to do this kind of slowly. We get 12 thirds x plus 12 fourths x. 3 happens to go into 12. I always forget to write my implications here. 3 goes into 12 four times. 4 goes into 12 three times, and that equals negative 24. And from this point, now you see I don't have any more fractions. That's the reason why we multiply both sides by the least common denominator. 4 of those x's plus 3 more of those x's gives me 7 of those x's. And at this point, I'm going to use the division property of equality. In other words, I'm going to divide both sides by a number that I want to divide by. And I essentially am asking myself, what number can I divide, or how can I undo this multiplication by 7 here? I divide by 7. So the only way I can undo that multiplication to rip 7 off of x is to divide by 7. Of course, 7 over 7 is just 1x. So we get that 1x is equal to a negative 24 sevenths. If this was reducible, I would try to reduce this, but this is not reducible, so this is a perfect answer.